Hi, welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam, and I am excited to tell you that today I have an unboxing of the Reaper Bones 4 core set. In August of 2017, Reaper Miniatures successfully funded their fourth Bones Kickstarter, and I have the core set for that here. Uh, within the next few days, I'll have some, I got some other things, some expansions, some add-ons. But for today, we're just going to make sure I can get through the core set and look at all that's in here. Um, so, I have waited quite a long time for this. Let's open it up and take a look. And I guess, before doing that, I will note, the core set officially also came with bases. Like a small, medium base, and then like a larger base, which if you've gotten any of their previous Kickstarters, they are identical to the bases that were in those, I, but they weren't actually in the box. They were loose in like the shipping box with all the other stuff, so I just grabbed a couple out, compared them, and they're the same. But that was part of it. But that wasn't anything new, and it's all the new miniatures... I'm excited for Okay, so I mean, the box has pretty art, of course. But when I opened the top, I wasn't expecting to have <laughs> little guys staring back at me. Okay, in previous years, they've had big bags. It looks like it's a bunch... I mean, there's a bunch of little bitty... Oh, we'll get to them later. Much more individually packed this time around. <laughs> Alright. Sure, let's begin with something simple. So, I'll cut me opening most of the bags, of course, and just jump you through looking at the minis. So, we got... Goblins. First thing, and it's you know goblins and goblins, goblins, and more goblins. Moving on, we have kobolds. of various types. As we're looking at more goblins here, I will note that uh, these bones are a little um, more gray than the bones I have experienced in the past. I believe they added pigment to them to make it where they don't quite glow as some of the old ones did under bright lights. Should be easier to paint. Okay, now we're going on to some more interesting gnarly creatures, sort of dire boar here. And a dire crocodile, alligator, I'm not really sure. But, uh, definitely, uh, not a guy I'd want to bump into back when I was walking down the street in Florida. And this one's fun, but in a bunch of pieces. So we got kind of a base here. Looks like maybe a little stump or something. But, uh, it'll cut off and that'll go into this crab base, so you have these crab legs on top of the sand here. Then we get this little top carapace shell, which has spots for each of these claws to come out to, one of them being more gnarly than the other. So a lot more complicated, but I think that one will look really neat. <laughs> Our ape attack includes few 
several P you know, multi piece miniatures. Like this guy's head is separate, but you know. <laughs> he uh he looks angry. This one has various pieces that are separate, including a base, his other arm, and his head also very angry, and this one would be like running at you. <laughs> and of course, of these apes, the scariest is going to be the armored ape. So, you get armor and a sword. He's got like a headband. <laughs> so, it's another ape in armor. And now we're moving on to sort of a uh, adventurer types. You got like a ranger and these are still normal bones. They still have the uh, fluffy bits like on the bow but I yeah, got a ranger lady. And kind of a probably a halfling probably I'm guessing a rogue based on how heavily cloaked. And this one's got some pieces but uh, it's like <laughs> a scarf will attach to the back here. So, oh, and he's got playing cards in hand. You can kind of tell that. So that's interesting. We got a old woman who has feet that are separate. You can kind of and show that off there. And actually, I think maybe all of these, or maybe some of them, are Pathfinder iconics. Um, this style looks, uh, this character looks familiar from Pathfinder. So, yeah, that's that's the like dwarven cleric, I think. So, some are you know adventurers, some or all of them being Pathfinder adventurers. Is that like a wizard or something on on their back? Yeah, that's that's definitely the um Yeah, it looks familiar from Pathfinder. But he's got a spot on his back where this horn goes and then his feet actually set into a base there. So <laughs> And this lady's fancy, she's uh got a base and like a cloak that connects to the base, but her feet are actually off the ground, so she's kind of flying there. Very nice. Here's another one that kind of reminds me of sort of a Pathfinder character style. And the last from this bag is uh, another one in pieces. Kind of a adventuring sort though. He's got spots on his back where it looks like a couple quivers go. Like a pair of quivers. One that goes off to his side and one from above and then his head separate too. And now we're moving on to the snake people which you know have sort of little bases that have tails that connects to you know the body here. It's got a sword. And then one arm's gonna hold a shield. While the other piece here is their uh, snake head. <laughs> and this one, of course, same. Starting with the snake buddy down there. Coils up. This guy's got two swords. And uh, she looks like an armor plate on the top of its head. These, um, these actually look really cool. Just like the snake skin has a wonderful texture. 
sure that I'll take some paint wonderfully. This one's got like a glaive. Okay, see it's head there. So just uh, filling in some uh, some perhaps missing monsters that I need. Another one of these with a sword and shield. And this one uh, coils up with a bow. It's got a... Looks like its other hand here is holding its quiver. Of course, each one of them is you know in several pieces, so these are not going to be the these are some assembly required, of course. Although I guess this one is just two. It's the body, and then this is the sorceress. The controversial during the Kickstarter of are they reptiles or mammals? Or is it a fantasy world where things don't matter? <laughs> and going on to more little goblin guys. Kind of a goblin sorcerer. Oh, look, is that is that a spider on his back? Perhaps he's familiar. <laughs> this one's um a little overweight. <laughs> I got some cool little personality to him. Is this still another goblin? Or suffering from uh, yeah, the axe. Of course, I have, as I've shown in a video, there are, you know, you can bend those back. Some <laughs> boiling water. Um, but yeah, definitely an issue with the bones there. I mean, they're flexible. So, but you know what? Easy to cut and durable. And supposedly some of that's fixed with their new Bones Black, which I think the uh, expansions are supposed to be in Bones Black. Like I said, I'll have that video here in a couple days with some of those. So I've got a couple of knives. And I feel like there are um, more multi-part shield and spear. Um, minis in this core set than there have been in some of the previous ones. Uh, probably just because overall they're making th you know the more complex things as more of the simple ones are out of the way. But uh, definitely there's an armor with shields and heads that have to be attached. Look at his face. Rawr. They've got a the old sword that because it's a two-handed sword and both his hands are attached to the sword. There we go. And we're getting townsfolk with this woman with a torch and a rolling pin that I think is kind of part of a, a mob, like a angry mob. Or this guard with a mace. Yeah. This guy has kind of an executioner look about him. It's a big old axe. <laughs> Perhaps a bit of a highwayman, cut purse kind of guy. Sort of that stance gives up. This guy has a dumbfounded expression which is saying something with the bones because if you compare like you know these to I mean the first bones were good they're definitely getting better as far as the ability to hold an expression and such uh, but otherwise kind of wanderer traveler maybe even farmer yeah kind of a farmer it's some sort of tool there you could easily chop that off and make it a staff if you want to be a traveler uh, this this, on the other hand, is an old beggar man. He's got a little bowl in his hand and staff to his side. 
Let's look at some of the detail. Because not only do you see like the stitching in the back, but you can see there's a little patch there. And admittedly, I, I focused it as well as I could, but like when I look at the miniature itself, there's more detail than I can see looking in my monitor. She's a very lovely lady. Very fancy evening gown. And this lady is a bit of a dancer, perhaps? This guy's got little spectacles on his nose, and he's got scrolls and such. She just looks pleasant out to work with a bucket. We got this uh, serving lady here, the tray. Okay, let's see. Put it in the right exactly there, so you can see like there's details on what's in on the plates that are on the tray. Like right. some of the details on these is really impressive. Yeah, kind of this uh, fryer fellow. His bowl haircut. We got a little base here for. This guy carrying a barrel that has his one leg as a separate piece, so this one's car in some assembly. Uh, got the big old pig. And of course, we saw pulling the wagon in the Kickstarter images, and of course, that means we get the wagon. Uh, so we got full of gourds and uh, in the bottom it'll connect to this piece here that can go over the pig's back and then that's got spots for the uh, two wheels and we got another group of people um, starting with twice there's a little ground tile and uh, this lady here who um, well, appears to have a little tombstone that sort of stands in the ground behind her or beside her so uh, at a graveyard and I got a old Wizard with a uh, bitty owl on his uh, shoulder. Uh, sort of heavily armored guard there. Another guard that uh, this one in a couple pieces. Okay, just a uh, helmet for the head. This uh, guard here has a sword and board, so we're getting a good number of sort of soldier types. This um, that's that's roosters on his shield. <laughs> so that's interesting, but all right. And this one here uh, has a two-handed sword and sort of a squared-off helmet. You got another uh, one here with um, sword and board. Here's either like a halfling or dwarf pie, with a shield and an axe. This one's nice, okay. So you have this lady 
here. And um, she has this staff for one of her arms. But uh, if you notice, the top of her head is complete. There's hair. However, optional witch hat. Because her hair is all completed, you don't have to put it on. But if you want to make her a witch, you can. If not, you can just leave the hat off. So that's cool. Whereas this guy is definitely a wizard. He got his, uh, he's got a sword, kind of a Gandalf kind of thing. But he's got a big staff there. And also what looks like some sort of spell or something coming out of, like, a jar in his other hand. So I'd say, yeah, definitely a wizard on this one. Another of the, uh, wizardly persuasion. We got big robe fella here. The big old hood there, but he's also wearing a big old hat, large beard, eh. and a staff that I'm sure would become unbent if you put it in some boiling water. <laughs> Coming to more, um, another on the, uh, sort of a warrior position here, another I'm a soldier with a cloak that goes there and sort of different helmet style and such. And uh, this guard, soldier, whatever it is, has a sort of glaive. There. And she's got a big old shield and heavy armor as well, but no helmet. So we're getting a few heavy armor females here, and I guess technically any of the ones that have helmets on you get to choose, but yeah, so the sword and board, but yeah, another one with uh, no helmet so you can see. And this one's like a sort of shorter halfling dwarven kind of thing, and it's like has a helmet that is like in Maybe is it in one of their hands, or does it go on their back? I don't know. Maybe the shield goes on their back, like it's in storage, and the helmet is in their hand. But uh, definitely not covering their face. <laughs> we got uh, another sort of warrior lady type here. Got a big braid going down there, and uh, looks like she's got uh, an axe, and then maybe I think that sword attaches. So the axe is like held back, like she's swinging it, but the sword is attached to her back. So she's got like an action pose, like she's ready to swing the axe at someone. Then we got this. Uh, barbarian kind of fella here. This, uh, this wizard looks, um, well, mean, cruel, but, uh, they got a hand out there and a hand holding a orb or whatnot. They got a base here and two Bladed weapons that go to the, uh, seems like it's probably going to be an action-y pose with sort of a billowing cape behind and such. This looks like they got like a bow in storage back there with some quivers, so almost maybe a dual wielding with a bow in, in store. That's a ranger. <laughs> oh yeah, this sort of... Some, yeah, wizardly type, as I'm trying to say, well, it could just be an old traveler until I realize that's like a baby dragon on his shoulder, so. <laughs> a little familiar. <laughs> we got this, uh. Right here, and what's she. Like a whip or a chain or something that she uses as a weapon? 
All right, then. And this one is interesting. Okay. So you get... This is someone that's armored, for sure. It's heavy armor. And... What's going on all back here? Well, the thing about this one here is that they're basically dragonborn. Um, or half dragon, or whatever you want to say, because they have that sort of dragon head there, and then they have a big tail. So, we're going dragon creature here, and uh, they also have wings, so. There's that. Um, so, yeah, definitely. That. But, because I guess there aren't that many of these sort of dragon fears, it's like, well, what do you want them to be holding? And in which hand? Uh, do you want them to hold daggers in left or right hand? Sacks of money in left or right hand? Tankards in left or right hand? A uh, small little buckler in left or right hand? Or swords in left or right hand? So they can have, you know, if they want to be holding two tankards, they can do that, or they can be dual wielding, or they can have a tankard in one hand and a sword in the other. It's like, literally they've given you options on that one to uh, really kind of customize what this uh, dragon warrior is holding. So, quite cool. Now we're moving to some, this one, this set's got a few larger ones, and this here, uh, with all these muscles, is like a were rat. And then now we had this gross tail and big muscly arms. <laughs> and then over here, what do we got here? Um this had the Oh, like uh Cyclops. And he's got a boulder in one hand and nothing in the other. <laughs> but yeah. Big Cyclops there. Maybe this is just sort of armored ogre or a very large orc or something. But uh, it's basically, you know, practically got like a door uh, <laughs> or a shield. Big old guy. This here. Ooh, there's a few pieces here. Of course, whenever there's sprues, you're always going to have to like clean up the spot where the sprue attaches. So you want to be careful removing it, which is why I don't do it right away. But um, for one, this guy has uh, a jawbone as a weapon here, and there is his other foot is attached by a sprue. It's got a little base to stand on, and. Um, He's some sort of, like, swamp monster looking thing, if you ask me, I guess. Gnarly claw. Ah. And then over here we have, um, I guess we'll start with, we have some feet. That, uh, let's see, and there's gonna be kind of, uh, well, it's a hammer, but kind of a crude one goes up to, oh, this is the, the Eden. This body has got like a shield over its stomach. Um, <laughs> he's got a, a pig tied up on his back. And, uh, I think this also went on his back. Just like a barrel and some skulls that go around him and then, as I said, it's an Eden. So both of its heads, kind of different expressions there. Hmm. Back to some uh, human figures here. This caked person's got a um, sword and board. I thought the person earlier had a whip. Uh, this guy here is this guy, an arm here with uh, quite a whip. Which, you know what? I think whip is one of the things that really will benefit from the flexible <laughs> bones material. <laughs> is it kind of bent? Doesn't matter. Is fine by this one. <laughs> Not sure if you can quite tell exactly how gaunt this person is here, but it uh, it's basically 
<laughs> skin on bone, just barely. And, uh, with them having the scythe. It's a nice look to it. And then, uh, a couple stabby, stabby weapons. Here. Okay. And we got this lady's got big gnarly sword and uh, on the back goes this tattered sort of shaggy cloak. Looks like it's got another sword <laughs> stored back there as well. Moving on to some that'll probably be kind of hard to get to show up on here because they're, um, yeah, they're transparent, translucent here. Got this sort of uh, ghostly figures though, you can kind of tell, sort of like coming up from the remains of a sunken ship, kind of a ghostly pirate figure. get them to show up as best I can. This one's kind of next to like a broken tree. I got a hook there. And kind of, there's like a rib cage open here. It's for the hook there. Another ghost pirate with sort of a treasure chest and sword and Like the translucent ones, I mean, you could choose just to paint them like normal and cover over it all, but it's the kind of thing, you know, if you paint some of the top where the body is and maybe leave some of the, you know, just sort of a dry brush on a lot of it, can uh, do wonders. Sort of a female ghost, again, uh, sort of broken remains of a sunken ship and kind of trying to get through the angle so you can see. Another ghostly figure, and um, our final ghost pirates got a couple of bottles, trying to trying to get some uh, some drinking in here. Mm -hmm. And then we get a few women from the Sophie and Friends add-on that they had near the end of the. Kickstarter, which of course must include the uh, Sophie here, you can tell by her wings, as a sort of barkeep. She's got a plate with some food and some steins. Also got another sort of adventuring lady here and a um, well this large lady is in fact a minotaur it's kind of cool Got uh, you know, up and on, goes on her back there, and then uh, dual wielding big axe. We get some more uh, gothic options here, starting with um, Dracula, and our lovely. Lady Vampire as well. Frankenstein. Uh, or, forgive me. Frankenstein's monster. Which actually makes me think. Was Bride of Frankenstein making a bride for Frankenstein's monster, or was Frankenstein then trying to make him a wife? Never really thought about that. I've not seen that old 
classic movie, but it's like, hmm, <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> and then the the mummy, kind of doing a roaring kind of thing, little. And then we get a little symbol down there, some sort of hieroglyph, perhaps. And another sort of similar themed female. So you get a couple for each sort of theme there. And a big snake staff. We get uh, some ghouls. And, uh... This ghoul is crouching and holding somebody's skull. There we go. <laughs> and then this one has like a base that he's separate from that has... Actually looks like a broken over tombstone on it. That he kind of is, you know, going to be balancing on and then... I guess that's what his face looks like. We also get this sort of uh, evil obelisk <laughs> statue thing, and um, well, I guess fancy gravestone is what is my mind with this one. This one's sort of a monument, and then there's like a book here, out of which is like an angel of death, maybe. Is the idea behind it? <laughs> then this big kind of skull covered altar or casket or what may be. Then this altar here has a very flat and simple top, but was packaged with some books that, you know, can be attached to it. Now, you could leave them separate, or you could attach them, but, like, the fact that they're separate and full means that, you know, if you wanted them to show Spider Book or the other symbol, you could do it. The open book could be open face up or open face down. Just giving you some options for how to lay it out. This is kind of cool. And we get um, a bunch of these, which are the tops for um, the fences they previously made in their last Kickstarter with the graveyard expansion. Um, apparently, there was an issue where the copyright was face like on the top side instead of the bottom side, so you'd see it. Uh, and so they included these, so you can choose. Um, how you wanted to decorate them. So, I didn't get the graveyard expansion, so I don't have those. Uh, however, um, I mean, they're still, you know, not completely useless. For example, if you play a game that has, like, objectives, these are gr would be great sort of little objective markers. And you get a whole bunch of them in a variety of different styles. And, you know, if you build, you know, terrain of your own, you could still use them for that, and, you know, it does some of the work. So, there's a number of those. And then, we get, um, it's kind of hard to show, because he's twisted at kind of an angle, but it's a wyvern would be sort of dragon-like on this kind of base that is a oh, that came to dash like a toppled statue it's kind of cool and it's got this sort of a spiny kind of tail that kind of rawr <laughs> And then, speaking of <laughs> multiple pieces, um, on top of this base here, you might uh, see there's a claw, 
to attach onto this uh, griffin. Again, a lot of pieces, but man, look at those. Let me see. The other one has some other stuff, but just the idea. You get another one out from the other side when it's not attached to plastic, but man, that's a <laughs> large figure. With the sculpt on those wings are beautiful. All those feathers. Yes, yeah, so we got a griffin there. And an owl bear. <laughs> it's a uh, interesting creature and in that I've seen a number of different takes of how much of it should be owl, how much of it should be like a bear. Um, a little base. This other arm, and it's kind of got bear arms with some feathers off the side, so it's kind of the take they put with it that way. We got a well, I think it's like a demonish dude here. Now we blade. Back supports some tattered wings. There's the face, tail. Uh, reason I think it's a demon dude is because of that face. And then uh, also the. Uh, Hooves for feet doesn't uh, hinder that theory. Hmm. You have this guy here. I'm gonna be very careful to show you. Like he's the same family as that last one, but he wasn't quite on a sprue. He was, however. In all sorts of pieces. <laughs> and this one's sort of a female of the species, same hoofed feet. Got horns, tail. She has a trident in one hand. And then more uh, wings. Not quite as many holes in them, but still can't be good for, uh, for being able to fly there. <laughs> you got. Um, well, that would be a very large mortar. Hmm, are those skulls or something in there? Um, there's a pedestal and a cape. And, uh, well, Baba Yaga. Or however you say the name. <laughs> Not really sure, but yeah. This, starting with this, this is a weird stepped multi-tier base, so that this guy has, you know, one foot higher than another. This big, gnarly, evil-looking armor, giant flowing cape. And that there is a evil-looking shield. Like, like I'm, I'm thinking I'm having that shield be like uh, intelligent item <laughs> kind of level. Uh, giant sword, helmet, yeah. Then we get to the um, series of what they call the mini tars. So you got little hoofed feet. This one has a, a mace and kind of a Hybrid, is it a goat, is it a cow, whatever. We get a number of them. This one wielding an axe. This one here has sort of a sword. And this one has a bit of a different look to it. Kinda sort of blinder or something. Sword there. Okay. 
Then we move on to, um, oh gee, that's a big head. These are, are they small world? Is that what they call them? I don't know. They're figures from, I think they're based on some sort of set, but they're basically, as far as I'm concerned, they're chibi figures. You know, you get a round base, little bitty body, giant head, this one's got an axe. We got uh, this lady here, who's uh, pointing sword weapon out there, and she's got a shield, so. Got her. We have another one. With, like a flower, flowers in her hair. And. What is that? A sword in one hand, but what is that? A. Staff? Yeah, because her hand is there, so like a staff in the other. Uh, this one here, at the base, and a scroll for this guy who's uh, got a hat. This is actually one I'm kind of, I kind of am glad to have just because funny wizard looking. Then look at that staff. Got a staff with them, and there's the arm to hold the scroll. Uh, this lady here. Uh, so I have some wings there. And we got um, well, a flaming sword on this one. As well as a shield like an angel on it. Hmm. I think for this final mini I might have to actually zoom the camera out. Oh, I can kind of see it's kind of focused there. Alright, so we got wings. Yeah, this is in the core set. If you if you weren't part of the Kickstarter, this is something they did very different than any other previous Kickstarters. Uh, <laughs> like the, the the previous one, Bones Three, was the first one I got a dragon f with. Um, but if I wouldn't have gotten it there, I'd have one now. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, this has a dragon, and it's it's kind of a unusual dragon, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So we got this here. It's like, what parts can I connect? It's about those. <laughs> so you have this sort of body, and it has legs, obviously. They kind of have it standing up with its wings going even taller. So it's kind of an upright dragon that's just on its hind legs. So bit of an unusual style of dragon. Um, then uh, from out of there comes a head that then kind of goes down. You can kind of see details in the mouth, but you should be able to catch that. I see that detail on that face there. Oh no! And of course the uh, the tail as well. But it's fine. I zoomed back in. Let's put this guy back here. Yeah, you can kind of see. <laughs> it's uh, it's an upright sort of dragon. It's like <laughs> it looks like it's almost in like a karate kind of pose, but. It's got to uh, come off. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like it's about to go fist to fist, but either way, uh, yeah, dragon. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the first time they've included a dragon in the core set. Um, but. A lot of fun minis.
as mentioned earlier, we also have hidden right here inside. Let's go to Pizza Dungeon. <laughs> they had fun with the packaging on this. The fact that, that that little bit was hidden right there, I was like, wait a minute, baby spa allows. Yeah, so that was those four. And of course, that's part of the Kickstarter. Of course, there are people that buy them and resell them if you want to get the whole collection. But the main thing, of course, is over the upcoming year, might take two for some of them, Reaper will be releasing all of these minis. Um, that's kind of the purpose, is they make the Kickstarter, you can get the big set by being part of the Kickstarter, and that's, like I said, that ended August 2017. Um, but they still will be coming out with all of these on retail, and Reaper's line of miniatures is beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I have quite a blast with them, um, and I have a lot of them. In fact, I have more. Uh, I have a few of the add-on sets, uh, or yeah, see the expansion sets, and then some add-ons. Um, check back. You know, if, if it's not already up, uh, if you're watching this right when I post it, I'll probably within the next few days have those videos uh, online as well. So, because um, I'll be sharing everything I got, because it's fun. Um, <laughs> A lot of minis. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, you know, if you managed to pick up uh, any Bones minis, let me know what your favorite ones were down below. Leave a comment. And, of course, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, always appreciate the thumbs up. It helps. <laughs> it really does. Um, thank you for watching. Anyways, though, thank you. Bye. <laughs>